Familiar, yet different. That's Abner. Stick around, I'll tell you about it. Hi, folks. Old Man Grognard back with another review. And it's been a while. I've been on vacation, things like that. Gave me a chance to catch up on some reading. And this time, I want to tell you about Avamir by David A. Hill. Take it away, narrator guy. Avamir, a series of booklets chronicling the fantasy world of Avamir by David A. Hill of Mothshade Concepts. Each booklet describes a portion of this fantastic world. For OSR games, from original edition to second edition and beyond. You can find them at Drive Through RPG or RPG Now. Take it away, OMG. Thank you. And Avamir is by David A. Hill, as he said. It is for OSR games. It was written it was written for the OSR as in the original three books. You could probably use Swords and Wizardry white box with this too, but that was the amazing, the original intent. In fact, it's not, I'm not talking about one books. Right now, I'm talking about about four or five books. These are what they look like. And Abamir is his campaign for this. It's kind of familiar, but there are a few things that are different about it, as I said in the intro. First of all, there's no orcs. Hobgoblins take their place. And the interesting thing about hobgoblins is they are kind of a developing race. They, original, they originally were djinn, but the hobgoblin is like the, the one that don't, don't, <laughs> that they're kind of corrupted. They started out as djinn, or, and they may have developed into ogre mages. Ogre mages. They also came out of ogre mages, and hobgoblins are their really bad kin. Most ogre mages are trying to get back to djinnhood, but it doesn't work out, so we have hobgoblins. What else we got here? There's no horses. They have an animal, 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 I'm really doing good today. The animal are called an autofawn. There's also no mules. Ibexes take their place. Or ponies. They got a creature called the okapi. They're close to livestock that way. There's also no paladins. It's, it's not a paladin. I mean, they have a race, a class called armagers. And what armagers are basically paladins for certain houses in the land and the houses are named after certain monsters like there's house basilisk and house here here let me let me let me show you something by the way these are the books these these are the size of the books and it's like house basilisk house wyvern house griffin and they can follow a deity or a divinity as he calls them in here but he also follows a house and does their bidding. And they get pretty much everything a paladin gets, but it's not, the religious part is not emphasized. They're more like cavaliers. They're more like knights for these houses. So, you have that. But there's a lot of adventure in this place. It, it just feels real good. It feels, it feels lived in. I love things that feel lived in. There are two countries, Devon and Mal, excuse me, Devon and Malvolg, I believe you call them. And the history of this whole land is humans came here. They don't say he doesn't say where, but I feel that that's going to be in the next book that comes out because this is an ongoing series. I feel that's going to be coming out, but what happened was when the humans got here, they had, what happened was the harrowing, which mainly they were fighting with the fae and the elementals who also already lived in this life. It's, it's kind of like the U.S. versus the, uh, U.S. versus the Native Americans type of thing. And it got really, really bad, and finally the deities had to get involved, and they came up with the Winterbine contract where they'll say, okay, 
the it's almost like the reverse of the the natives and and the U.S. because they're saying okay now we're going to let the humans live certain areas they're going to let the Fela have domain over other areas and so on and so forth and it's very interesting how this works out for one golems in the past have been powered by elementals trapped inside the golem. we can't do that anymore the contract doesn't allow it so they have to find another way to power them like i said it's familiar but at the same time it's kind of unique and david has done a really good job of conveying that inside covers usually have maps things like that the map of the area there are at the moment five books and we'll get to that in a minute there are the usual races there are no demi demi races in other words there's no half orcs there's no half elves because they said the uh, humans and other creatures like this cannot interbreed now most people there's a lot of players going oh man i like playing half orcs anyway do that to me that's an opportunity because I'm a DM of, D, of a DM mind. And it's like, I saw that and I thought, there's a plot there. You could really have like a Romeo, a Capulet and, and Montague, Romeo and Juliet plot here. That would really work well. You could, I mean, you, see the thing is with Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, the thing with them is, yeah, it's a love story. Yeah, it's, but there's, so much more you can so much more you could do with it you can't have combats you can't have battles kidnappings betrayals things like that all that kind of good action stuff inside of there so that's the thing the buka the buka which they, what they call the halflings they like water they spend a lot of time around the water boats and stuff but they also like the air they have these things called drift towns and they're basically up in the clouds they have towns up in the clouds because there's a certain wood here called cloud wood, which floats. And they plant the cloudwood trees in the clouds and they harvest them and use them to build their towns that drift around from place to place. Okay, I'm gonna kind of I'm trying to give you kind of a general overview of what's going on here. First of all, here's the first book, Supplement Zero Avamir. This gives you the basics and the basis pretty much of what's going on in the world and kind of a quick overview of the two lands and what you do what what you can't do there's there's some very interesting things in there the houses have a lot of sway in certain areas the second book is supplement one Davron all about that continent and this continent is a little kind of more organized it reminds me a little of Mistara not quite a little bit of everything but everything is kind of, it's, it's more settled there's places to adventure but it's it's kind of more settled and it's a good it's a good place to, to run around and you just gotta you know you gotta watch your butt a little bit more because of like the houses and the rulers and things like that it gives you it gives you everything it's a one column see it's a one column page with real easy to read type and they've got some interesting monsters and and magic items and other things like that they talk about the cities the counties who's what who's ruling what what the capital is the population of humans demi humans whatever that's the first that's the first supplement number zero and supplement number one now supplement number two is is all about Malvok, which is the neighbor country and this one I like because it's got more more adventure it's not as settled it's a little more wild more of the fey in here and like I said once again maps on the inside of the area on both both covers and it it just feels more primitive more more exploratory more the U.S., you know, Lewis and Clark type thing going going off that way. It's got wild, a little wilder creatures, and they do have some houses, a few houses, but they're not very big, and they don't they don't get around as much as the uh, the Davon people do. The fourth book in this series is called Eldritch Wizardry. 
Now this is all about wizardry. Now you have the the, the regular magic users and magic system here, the Vancey Magic. This also has a Vancey, but it gives you an alternative about uh, they have they have they have casters called flow casters, and they can see and feel and manipulate the flow of magic. The flow of magic is kind of like a magical. They they. Uh, they, they ascribe it to like water. It has ebbs, flows, eddies, and it's a chart in here. It reminded me quite a bit of wild magic, like the wild magic areas and the dead magic areas and the realms, I think in second edition. And they have these flows and eddies of the magic, and sometimes it can really gimp your spell, but sometimes it can make it really powerful, depending on where you are and what the flow is around you. They also have a really neat, neat, uh, class in here that I've already appropriated for my Stars and Wizard game called the, the, I want to say Spell Duelist, no, they call it the, I had it right there on the tip of my tongue, the Spell Fencer. Imagine a combination of Errol Flynn and Gandalf, a guy with a rapier, a special rapier that's bonded to him that he can cast spells out of and do other things too. Some really neat stuff. I showed this to a player of, or I'm, I'm in a 5th edition game, showed another player, and he said, you're going to do Swords of Wizardry again after this, right? So yes. I said, can I play one of these? I said, sure. I'll, I, and I, I, I wrote it up, and I typed it up out of the book, and gave it to him, and said, oh yeah, sure, here. Now I typed it up out of the book, and I'll tell you why in a, in a bit. And the last one we got, for for those are the main books. The last one we got is called The House of Ilfren, which is a module. It's about a master trickster who's hasn't seen been seen for many, many, many millennia. You've got to go to his house and find out why. That's the basic plot. But these he, he says he's always gonna also gonna come out with a fifth book about deities and things like that. But it's an ongoing series and it feels really good. It feels it feels lived in. I kind of like it because it just feels, mm, you know, it's got the, it's got that sweet spot thing where it's unfamiliar enough where the players have got to go what, but at the same time familiar enough where they can just go in a tavern and you know usually do this the thing they do. Now the reason I said I had to copy it out of the book was because the uh, oh and by the way. There's also a few subclasses. There's wild walkers, which are rangers, uh, gutter snipes, which are thieves, and others. Um, the druids and the monks are psion, and the monks are psionic, not the druids, the, the monks. But anyway, mm -hmm. it got a little darker here. So, the reason I had to copy it out of the book is because only the first two, supplement zero and one, these are the only two right here that are that are on drive through RPG are in PDF form. I don't know why he hasn't put the other ones on. Or maybe he's getting ready to, I don't know. But those are the only two that are in PDF form as of now. So I had to do a little juggling there. Now, to get them, to get at least the first two, drive through or RPG now. I'll put them down there. Uh, the PDFs are six ninety nine each. I believe the books are either ten or fifteen each. I can't remember wh which the physical books, I don't know where you can get them. I got mine in North Texas. Well, actually, I didn't get mine in North Texas. He sent me a, he sent me a set to review. But I've seen them at North Texas RPG Cons, so keep an eye out at conventions where you are. If I can get you the uh, the link to the PD, to the to the physical copies, Moth Shade Productions is the publisher. I'll put it down there, which is his publisher. Anyway, so that's... That's Avamir. I would recommend it. Great place to start. Great place to start a campaign. And until I see you guys next time. Oh, and leave, leave your comments. You know, if you'd like this, if you don't like this, or anything else, at oldmangrognard at gmail .com. And I also now have a radio show, not a, rather a podcast called Radio Grognard, and that's on Anchor. And you can also leave me a voicemail there. That's where I'm answering all my emails. So. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye-bye.